just simply a proof by counting. So what happens is we want you to have a, a task to count. So I have a task to count, and what happens is it has two versions of this happening. We simply count by technique number one, and somebody else counts by technique number two. And we find these two cardinalities. And so we get a, say, an answer one, and I get a answer two. So I count it, and I get some formulas about it. Because they're counting the same thing, what has to happen is that the answers that both people have are going to be equal. And this allows us to create things that are equal to one another without having to even check the algebra. Uh, back to the one problem. Uh, let's say that we back to at least one girl for team of 10, which is equal to 11 guys, and then five girls. I want to count the ways to count at least one girl for a team of 10. And I'm going to do two techniques. One technique is to simply say, this is simply all teams minus all guy teams. That's one way that I could do it. The other way I could do it is to do exactly one or two or three or four or five. So both of these techniques would count the same thing. They would find the way to find at least one girl. I could do all the teams minus the all guy teams. That would leave me away, that would leave me all teams that have at least a girl in them. Another person way would be to say, I want to count it by saying, how many are the exactly one girls, exactly two, exactly three, exactly four, exactly five, and just simply add those all up. And the first one is simply 16 choose 10 minus 11 choose 10. The other one was to say, okay, of the girls, choose one, and of the guys, get nine, or of the girls, choose two, and of the guys, choose eight, or of the girls, choose three, and of the guys, choose seven, or of the girls, choose four, and then of the guys, choose six, or of the girls, choose five, and of the guys, choose five. Both of these count the same task. And so I could write this entire thing as factorial notation and then simplify the left and simplify the right and show that they're equal. But on the other hand, I know they're equal because they count the same thing. This equality has to be true. So I don't have to do any algebra. I know that this long, messy fact, this factorial object on the left has to be equal to this factorial object on the right because they counted the same thing. Another one example for this is what's called Pascal's identity. And Pascal's identity is that if you have n plus 1 and you want to choose k, that's the same thing as having n and choosing k minus 1 or having n and choosing k. Now we could show this, show by algebra. All right, how would you show it by algebra? Well, what you would do is you would just say that's n plus 1 factorial divided by k factorial times n plus 1 minus k factorial, and then check does this equal n factorial all over k minus 1 factorial times n minus k plus 1 factorial, because it's a minus minus, so that makes it a plus, plus n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And then what you would do is, by algebra, 
show the equality holds. And the way that you would do that is essentially just simply, these are two fractions, make a common denominator, add it together, simplify as best as you can, and you're going to get the left-hand side. Now, it's not really the easiest thing to do, but on the other hand, we could show by a counting proof. The hard part about a counting proof is we need something to count. <laughs> a task to count where if I count it one direction, I get one formula. If I count it a different way, I get the second formula. Those formulas have to be equal. And so I'm going to have a single thing to count such that if I count it one way, I get the left. But if I count it differently, I get the entire right. And the difficulty of counting proofs and coming up with them is trying to be creative about that task. And this is different than the books. Uh, I like to do it this way. Let's say that we have, you have N people plus U, which means we have a total of N plus one people. All right, and now here's your task. Make a committee of K. Uh, instead of using the word make, I'm going to use choose a committee of K people. Well, that's not bad. Uh, one way that I could do this is just to say, for n plus 1 people, I'm going to choose k. But on this other direction, what I'm going to do is, I'm kind of curious. Um, are you in the committee? I mean, it's still the same problem, but I'm actually interested in, are, are you in the committee? Um, really, the answer to be this, it would be either yes, or no. <laughs> right? If you're on the committee, if you are, how did that happen? The only way for you to be on the committee is that you have you, and how many ways to pick you? One, right? There's one way to pick you. But then the rest of the committee has to be from everybody else. So if you've already been selected, there's only N people to look at, everyone else. And then how many more people do we need? Well, you're already on the committee. So I need to pick K minus one or no, you're not on the committee. Well, if you're not on the committee, that means of the N people who are not you, right? Cause this is N plus there's you right there. You're the one. Then I would just go ahead and pick all the K people from the committee. And so that one doesn't need to be there. And so it ends up being that, Oh, how do I choose a committee of K people? Well, N, N plus one choose K. But you know what? If you were interested in you, you're either on it or not. If you are, then what happened is you're on the committee and then you need K minus one more people from the end to choose. Or you're not on the committee. Or means plus. And so if you're not on the committee, that means from the end people who are not you, you need to choose K. And these have to be equal. So this is a classic, you know, counting proof, combinatorical proof, which is you have to find a task to count. And we count one direction, we count the other way. Because I've counted the same thing, they must be equal. And the hard part is coming up with a task to do. If you read in the textbook when they're actually doing the proof of Pascal's identity, um, they talk about what I would consider a rather oddball task. I like, I like this task. It's easier to think about and it's easier to verbally describe. And that's it. So that gets us through combinations and permutations and counting proofs.